can for one second. No problem. All right, so let's see here. So we are recording. So uh, let me share my desktop, guys, and then and then we'll go ahead and and get this uh, get this party started here. So you should be able to see my screen now. And uh, thank you, everybody. Welcome to the Wealth Mindset and Real Estate Investing Meetup. Um, I am the host of the Wealth Mindset and Real Estate Investing Meetup, and I'm also the, the CEO and co-founder of Red Fox Multifamily. And you know, anyone uh, wanting to, to reach out to me can scan the QR code and we can, uh, we can set up some time uh, to talk. Um, but just a little bit about the the, the meetup here, guys, real quick. And, you know, the Wealth Mindset and Real Estate Investing Meetup is it's it's really open to all who are interested in growing generational wealth through um, passive real estate investing and increasing their financial intelligence. Um, this meetup is for the busy professionals and retirees and across various industries. Um, the the individuals in the group make a make a good living and have some discretionary income to invest in real estate because they know it has proven wealth building power, but they don't necessarily have the time or skill set or the network um, you know, to, to be able to do it at speed and scale. And so this, this meetup is intended to help uh, educate folks and, and provide that, um, that, that sort of connection there to help everybody grow that, their wealth mindset by learning how to build and preserve their wealth while developing and maintaining that abundance my, mindset instead of the scarce mindset. So we're we're going to focus primarily, you know, as you know, for for those of you who who've been joining us for the past um, few since we launched a, about a, a month and a half ago, um, we we focus on multifamily real estate investing as well as other proven ways to build wealth uh, through real estate through passive investments. Um, but you know, we we want members to be uh, in, to be engaged to you know, uh, suggest topics, you know, for uh, for future meetings, but definitely engage and and please, uh, you know, uh, sit back and, and 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 learn from from our speakers. And so in terms of logistics, guys, if you could just please, uh, you know, for those of you who are not speaking, mute your lines um, when you're not speaking, hold questions to the end of the presentation. Um, as I mentioned, this presentation will be recorded. Um, this the material does not uh, constitute an offer or solicitation to purchase securities and this is really for information for education only and should not be construed as a, a business financial or legal advice um, so so today's agenda here guys we're going to go through a brief speaker introduction i'll hand it off to our speaker for a presentation and overview of of today's topic um, we'll do a little q a and if, if time permits if, ever, if if we can have some time afterwards to just do some virtual networking all right so uh so let me get get down to it so uh chris decel chris decel um heads investor relations at cloud capital where he's closely involved in all aspects of the business, including raising capital, operations, and marketing. Uh, Chris has raised millions of dollars and invested in multiple multifamily deals as both a GP and an LP across Texas, Georgia, and Florida. He brings a breadth in, in, of experience in construction, project management, and capital raising. Before his time at Cloud Capital, he worked in the world of television and is a multiple Emmy Award winner as a producer and director, uh, most recently for producing the 2012 Summer Olympics for the best uh, for the first time in 3D. Uh, Chris has also, also worked on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno on NBC Studios, uh, Olympics, the NFL, NBA, and MLB, and the Golf Channel. Um, Chris DeSalle is the founder and CEO of 3D HD Gear, which supplies professional video, audio, and fiber systems and computer networking equipment. And he's now focused on executing Cloud Capital's marketing, operations, and capital raising strategies to add multi family assets throughout Texas to Cloud Capital's portfolio. Um, uh, Chris uh, res resides in San Diego and, and Los Angeles, um, California, and is a proud graduate of Emerson College with a degree in communications focusing on marketing and television production. Uh, Chris grew up in on the East Coast here in Saugerties, New York, as the 10th of 12 
children, so big family. So let me hand it over to uh, Chris. Chris, and and before I do that, I just have to also say Chris has um, has been a, a great friend um, to me. He has also uh, been a, a, an advisor and mentor as I've stepped into this multifamily space and just been so appreciative of and of his generosity and his time uh, to to help educate me and, and all of us um, by continuing to give back at, at, and taking time out of his busy schedule. So I really appreciate you, Chris, um, for taking the time to do this. And I'll, with that, I'll, I'll stop presenting and I'll hand it over to you. Thank you so much for that nice introduction, Chris. So it was, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's been a real pleasure meeting Chris and a, a bunch of uh, different people along my path, everyone. And um, some of the things that I've learned along the way that I, I uh, it was just invaluable. So I, hopefully I, I can talk to each and every one of you and, and ask questions because <clears throat> everybody, I think there's, uh, Chris can, we agree on this. There's too much uh, unicorns and rainbows and not enough, you know, nitty gritty on, it's hard. It's hard to raise capital. It's hard to find deals. It's hard to get a, a deal and then turn it around so everybody uh, can make money in, in, a, in a sustainable way. So you just rinse and repeat. So <clears throat> just a real, real quick background on myself. I was going to get a, a, a fourplex in Los Angeles for one point two million dollars. The prices here are a little ridiculous, and I was going to have to put you know six hundred and eighty k into it and live in one of the units and rent out the other three. And then I was reluctantly bought to a. Uh, uh, a real estate meetup group and um, where everybody had to stand up and say what they were doing in real estate. And I, I really didn't want to go. And my friend talked me into it and it, it was life changing because I stood up and said that I was going to buy a uh, fourplex for 1.2 million, put 680 into it, live in one of the units and, and rent out the rest. And then they had a uh, speaker on commercial finance and, uh, and he was fantastic. And uh, actually I learned a lot and uh, I met a few people there and I was walking in my car a gentleman pulled me aside and asked me what I was doing, and I told him again, uh, fourplex, uh, et cetera. And he's like, "Yeah, don't do that. You're you're going to lose a fortune." I said, "If you want to really learn how to invest in real estate, he goes, come with me, and I'll, and I'll show you." So, uh, being the cynical New Yorker that I am, I, I fired out a million questions to him, and um, he answered all of them. And then I met with that guy uh, like 48 times over the next seven months or so, and it really changed the way. It was like getting my MBA in real estate. So I invested with him on one deal and I said, look, I'll invest with you, but you got to show me every step of the way. And he did. And I did another deal with him. And then that was over two years. And then I was really, really get, I, I had enough knowledge to where I could spread out my wings and do it as a general partner where I could really bring value to the team. So um, it was, and, and I, before that I read 32 books and then uh, I grew up uh, on the poor side of life. There was a lot of love in my house always, but uh, I, I had uh, I bought my own lawnmower when I was 11 and a snowblower when I was 12. And my best client was a, a German immigrant. His name was Mr. Rosner, who had 14 apartment complexes in and around where I grew up. And he was my best customer in that deep uh, German accent. He'd always say, Christopher, you must buy real estate. And that always stuck with me. So uh, I always wanted to do it in the back of my head. But then my TV career kind of took off eventually, you know, as I, I navigated up that uh, the, that channel. But once I got a sedentary schedule um, and a predictable schedule um, in Los Angeles, I was able to um, really focus in on the real estate. So then I circled back. Um, I don't know how much, uh, Chris, uh, the, uh, and everyone in the group here, I was going to, I didn't know which way you wanted me to go. Did you want me to maybe walk through the model or walk through um, a deck or walk through? I wasn't sure where everybody was. So I just yeah. don't want to. Um, whichever, whatever uh, you feel most comfortable with, but but with I think the part of the focus that we wanted to hit on was the property management aspect of it and the value of property management because I know that you guys um, really specialize in in that with all of your assets and and I thought we could we could also you know drive home some of that focus. But yes, please uh, share whatever content you'd like. Yeah. So um, uh, I, think I can tell you how to share. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, and. Uh, so I, I what I, I think it would be uh, I think what would be valuable is if I shared the model because our model basically is the whole business. So we base it off of that. And then maybe we can do another one afterwards or we could maybe a couple months down the road where I can share with you our asset management database because then you'll see the model in action if that makes sense. Sure. So um, so uh, give me one sec here. I'm just gonna open up this file here.
And uh, while I'm doing this, one of the things uh, that we that we focus on is um, we we look at data. So my partner Nathan is is, is brilliant. He, he grew up on Wall Street, and he brings his Wall Street um, mentality to the business. And uh, so it just so happens that the business is real estate. So when we look at a property, we we take our we take our minds out of it. And what we do is we will um, we focus on data. So what we do is we geo target towards job locations. So we know that um, and the job locations has to be diverse. So what does that uh, mean is so there has to be diverse job uh, uh, opportunities very specifically within a two to 10 mile radius from where the apartment complex is because and this seems so basic, but it's so true if uh, people have um, solid jobs and job opportunities, they're going to be able to pay rent and and uh, and people. Um, uh, and I we, we had a couple opportunities. One was uh, uh, with a with with a potential investment that looked great on paper in Tennessee. Um, so once we looked at the data, it looked like a solid job base. And then once I dug in, um, the job base was really based on one car manufacturer. And uh, so once I dug in a little further, the car manufacturer retools their uh, plant every um, uh, every 28 to 32 months. And then they lay people off for eight to 13 weeks. So and all those feeder businesses go, uh, they, they all suffer. So on paper, it looked like it was a really solid deal. We did not do that deal because we thought every three years, basically, we were going to have to take a hit and our investors would have to take a hit. Now, since um, we bought three deals over the last year and a half, uh, two in Houston and one in um, uh, uh, Texas City, which is just south of Houston, and there's 24 Fortune 500 companies within a half hour drive, basically, from the apartment complex. So um, I'm going to share with you our, 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 our model so then you guys can see what the data that we we use to really um, hone in to make sure that the apartment complex is, is going to be able to make profit. We're able going to be able to make it into a really nice home for residents and give them the experience that they deserve because we're buying these. It's called the distressed asset. What does that mean? We're buying usually from people that don't put any money into these apartments and they're run down and so trashy that we have to go in and change that. And one of the hardest things that we have to do, and our team are experts at it, is change hearts and minds because the people have been beaten down so bad from their previous ownership and bad management. And we come in and we're the opposite. If there's stuff broken, we fix it right away. We pump millions into these places. We want to give the residents the best living experience ever because when and if we do that and we do that, um, they're going to have a great experience. They're going to tell their friends and then they tell their friends, we're going to remake the community in our mindset, not the previous owner's mindset. And that's one of the hardest things that a lot of people don't really talk about. And it's so important because um, if people see you as a, a bad oper operator and owner, um, it, it just suffers. So if they see you as somebody that's on their side, um, it, it just helps out a lot. So when we have units that are empty, we just tell our residents and they tell their like-minded friends because we rebuild the community to make them family friendly so that families can live there and they don't have to worry about, you know, their kids running out to the pool and we have security systems and we, we give a lot of love to these communities and, and that really helps out. Now, because everybody talks about the sticks and bricks, which are super important, but um, it's really the mindset that you have to come in and change on that um, uh, on that particular genre of, uh, of the value add apartment complex investing. So I'm going to run through a deal real quick with you and, I'll, uh, and we can dig in afterwards on uh, 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 our last deal is called 506 South. And um, uh, we can we we can ask questions afterwards or as we go along, however you guys see fit. So um, I got to figure out how I can share here. Give me one yeah, second. so right next to the uh, I made you a presenter. So right next to the okay. button where it says uh, leave, there's a, up, a, a button that says share with an up arrow. If you hit that, you'll be able to select the screen that you want to share and you should be good to go. Cool. Just. Uh,
There you go. We got you. All righty, cool. All right, this is a deal summary. Uh, it's called 506 South. It's in web. Can you see it, Chris? Yes. Cool. So, and I, I'll 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 quickly run through it, and we can go through everything after the fact. We can dig in deeper. But if everybody sees the tabs underneath, and this is part of the brilliance of my partner Nathan, who bought his great mindset of Wall Street, and we look at uh, apartment complexes that way that Wall Street does when they look at a business. So even if it's a tech business, a car manufacturing business, you name it. We're doing the same thing that like a Credit Suisse or a Goldman Sachs or somebody would do it. It just so happens our business is real estate. So all these tabs feed this front page and, um, it, and, and the formulas on there, we don't ever change the formulas. Either the deal works or it doesn't. So when, when, when you guys or gals ask for um, underwriting, make sure they give you their underwriting. If they say no, not give it, like I've had a couple of people that have called me to invest with them, but they wouldn't give me their underwriting. So don't invest with those people. That If, they're, if they, they don't feel confident in sharing with you the way they, their methodology, then run and run to the hills and tell everybody too, because that means something, something bad is going to happen. So um, and again, this is pretty basic, but we start out, here's the property name, the address, the year it was built. And the year it was built is pretty important because there's, there's some issues that you have. When you, if you're buying an older asset, you know you're going to get like, you know, older pipes, older infrastructure and stuff like that. So you really, a part of your due diligence um, uh, is we, when we do due diligence, we have our management team right there with us. And it's a team of experts. We have a team of, uh, you know, we have electricians, plumbers. We scope the lines. We want to look at everything that could possibly go wrong. Um, we have HVAC people, roofers, masons, uh, plumbers. And, and the reason why we do that is we, we know it's a distressed asset. So we know it's a, it's, a, it's a crummy pace that we have to turn it around. So what we take their findings and then they'll tell us, okay, th this is what it's going to need to be operational and what it needs to be to get the value of the property back up to living standards that, that we would want to live in, right? That our mothers and grandmothers would want to live in because we're not here to have a, we're not slumlords, we're the opposite. So we take their findings and then we'll go out and bid out, we'll bid for those findings that we need to correct, whether it's roofs, HVACs, electrical, rehab. Um, we know we're gonna have to renovate, you know, countertops, um, all these things. So then we put those bids into our model so we know the real costs as opposed to, well, we think it's gonna cost X or Y. We know it's gonna cost because we have signed contract for that saying that. So um, that, that's pretty important that, uh, so you wanna make, it's hard enough to get a deal, but you wanna make sure that when you get a deal that you're gonna be a success as opposed to, well, I think it's gonna cost this and I think it's gonna cost that. Uh, we know it's gonna cost that because we went out and bid that. And, and that's what I hope all you guys and gals do as well. So um, and here's the square foot, rentable square foot, you know, price per square foot. And then, you know, the occupancy when we bought it was 98.3. Um, the renovated units were only four and a half, 4.4 percent. And people would run and say, you know, oh, my gosh, it, you know, it's 98 point percent full. Why would you buy 100 percent full? In a perfect world, we'd want it even more emptier because we want the renovation process to start quicker. Because the quicker you get to, to renovate, um, the quicker you're going to be able to move up the rent. You're able to get the a new, like fresh, it's like a new car smell, right, into your community. You have to change the hearts and minds. So we'll do the exteriors with paint and pool and all the rest of that good stuff. But it's really, when people come home, we want to give them the best home that they can um, that they can achieve. So um, we purchased this for $17.8 million. So uh, the trailing uh, T12s was 3.5 and the trailing T3s and T12s are 4.3. And uh, our purchase price our unit was right under 99,000 per door, which is pretty good. And we're planning on exiting around 129 um, per door, but things happen. The economy's a little different now. And um, we found out some different items. I don't know if you guys know what a Great Wolf Lodge and Resort 
is, but they're building one right next door to our apartment complex. So um, uh, we're gonna, we might hold this a lot longer because that's a great value pay to us. A lot of our residents can live and literally walk right next door to work because they're, um, it's an indoor water park hotel and it's just fantastic. So, and this is our projected, you know, profit per unit is 30K. Um, the place was um, not so good. So we couldn't get a Freddie or Fannie loan. So we had to get bridge debt. So it's a, uh, a three-year loan with two, uh, two extra years on there. So basically it's a five-year with, uh, with two added years. So uh, an interest rate is 3.8. Um, we have interest only for 36. So, um, and then <laughs> the loan to value is 75%. So then, you know, and the debt yields about 6.3%. And the DCSR is 1.57, and the minimum for for years is 1.39. So we think it's going to take us about 16 months to stabilize. We've already owned it for seven months. We 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 we're a little ahead of schedule renovation wise. Um, uh, we're going to probably hold it a little longer. We'll determine at three years. You know, we'll look at everything, but those added uh, values of a new next door neighbor that has you know walkable jobs right to our residents, which is just unbelievable. So we might um, keep it a little longer, but just so everybody knows, everything's for sale because it's just not my money, it's our investors' money. So if someone comes in and offers double us what we sold, you know, what we purchased it for, we have to listen. So um, so we, our budget for the interior renovations was uh, 856, the exterior was 480. So we always have a contingency like a 66K just in case something's going to go wrong because something always goes wrong. So um, the average of our rent premiums we think is going to be around 220. Some are around 100 and then some go all the way up to 300 plus. Um, but that's the average. So because there's a good mix of units on on this apartment complex. So, uh, um, yeah, so we got... Uh, um, we came in with a $1.4 million to, uh, for CapEx. So what does that mean? We're coming in and um, we're going to renovate for $1.4 million. We've already exceeded that a little bit. We're closer to two, um, uh, but the place is gorgeous now. And, it's, and it's, the value has shot up a, a lot. And uh, if before and after videos, you'll see that it's just tremendous. So... Uh, and then um, here's our unit mix. It literally goes through everything, you know, in place rent, square foot rent, target rent, square foot. You know, here's the purchase price again, acquisition fee. What we do with our acquisition fee, we try to keep it. We're, my partner and I are very, very pro deal. We do not, we not use the acquisition fee as a money grab. What that is, is our cost, our real cost that we put into the property to uh, make the deal work, our uh, due diligence costs, because we had a team of, I think, 22 members, electricians, uh, plumbers, roofers, general contractors. We walked every unit because we want experts to tell us what's wrong, and we're okay with paying those experts, right? Then lawyer fees, and then travel, and uh, a lot of the fees um, associated with our time so we don't use that as a like a money grab and a lot of people do but we try to keep that as down as possible because we want to make sure that everything is going back to the investor every we're pro investor pro deal and we invest a lot of our own money uh, a lot in every deal so we're not only gps we're lps as well so uh, so it so we want the everyone to know that we also have our hard-earned money into the game um, so we have into the into the deal. So we have skin in the game. So um, and then our closing costs, that's pretty basic, you know, CapEx and working capital, you know, it's one point seven million, almost one point eight. So and, 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 and that's the total. Right. So um, and on top, again, it's acquisition fees, one and a half percent asset management fee. And again, that's uh, uh, asset management fee is just for us managing the asset, making sure that everything is running on time because it's a lot of balls up in the air and our team are experts on the ground but nathan and i work with the team 
right from the very beginning. So they know every step of the way what we have to do. We set up these big timelines in our standard operating procedures so everyone can see everything and they know which way we're going and which way that um, we're gonna operate. So there's no questions. Everybody knows everything from day one, right from the very start when we walk the property. So um, uh, uh, and on this deal, uh, Nathan and I put in 750K of our own money. So, um, and this is what really sells the deal. So we projected total rate of return, you know, is 28%, point, almost 29 on the sale. And the equity multiple will, will be 2.03. And uh, our profit will probably be 5.6. These numbers are probably gonna go a little higher now. And we're probably going to hold a little longer, but again, we just don't know because all of those things that we said and the economy is a little different and um, uh, than when we wrote this model. And it, uh, it's in our favor, actually, where it is because in the area where we're building, it is just booming. And there we focus on workforce housing, and there's not enough workforce housing in that area. So uh, we invest in that workforce housing, and we really give our residents a lot of love because then. It's a win-win situation. They get a, a new home and we're able to make solid returns. And it's not a get-rich-quick scheme. There's a lot of elements that go into it behind it. And we have a lot of great team members with, with Patricia Whitehurst, our regional manager, Denise Ochoa, our on-site manager, and Victor um, Baez, who's our really, really good uh, head of our maintenance. And he just keeps all these balls up in the air moving because um, uh, you have to do these renovations in a timely fashion, but you also have to pay attention to the residents that are living there and you don't want to disturb them. So it's a it's a little bit of a juggle, but now we've done this with the same team for three separate places and everybody knows the role. So um, uh, the, the one thing too is it's a team sport. Don't ever try to do this by yourself because it, it'll be really, really, really hard. Um, so get good team members and partner up with them and, and they'll show you, you know, or you know, you'll learn the way um, and, and you can bring value to that team. So um, and if you were an LP, your cash on cash return will be 8.1 percent. Uh, your initial rate of return is 23 percent. So your exit multiple 1.78 here. And then the average annual return is around 26.1 percent. So um, so uh, so if you were to invest 100K, on year three, you'd get $178,298. So, uh, so be a 26% return. So, and then here's your operating margins. We can go into that. Um, and it, it, the break-even occupancy, just so you guys know, and I'm, I'm trying to go in fast. So, so if, if it has 85% full, we'll still be making money. And it goes down from there because we're able to bump up the rents and everything like that. So. And then if uh, uh, I can go into, I don't know how, how deep you want to go. So this is how we break everything down because you have to put everything down. And I could walk through this a little further, maybe in a different time if you guys want. But we all the numbers are so important. Everything is important. So we include everything into this model. So when we see it, um, uh, we're just not thinking, we're not hoping, we're not, uh, we think it's gonna cost this. We know it's gonna cost this uh, because you, we, we know where every cent is going when we do it. So, and it's, it's pretty important. So we forecast all the way out and keep going. And then we keep track to make sure that our expenses are not gonna you know, exceed what they were, or if there's leaks, we'll be able to see them. Um, and uh, if there's stuff going wrong, we'll be able to see that as well in a, in a timely fashion. So we'll know if we have to repair something that we can do it in a quick fashion. Um, and again, here's some of the, uh, it's basically all the uh, data that feeds the front page. It's just uh, broken down even further and we get into the nitty gritty, um, it, it, like very, very granular. So, um, uh, and, and, and all these items are done in a way where uh, uh, it goes back to those formulas where, again, we don't change them. We, we let them know uh, all those formulas will actually feed uh, the deal summary page 
so we know if we have a solid asset and if it's going to be good or not so well, chris that's that's awesome stuff and i actually um it, it jogs uh, so many questions uh that that came to mind uh for me and one one of them that i wanted to throw out to you is you know you that that do that type of analysis that you go through i remember one of the the times that you and i had a chance to talk one on one you talked about from the property management perspective, you actually, you guys actually, when you're doing your due diligence, you actually walk the property with them. Can you talk a little bit about that process and what that looks like and, and why it's so important to have the property management team alongside of you when you're when you're doing your due diligence to be able to get those those, those numbers down to the T like you do? Yes, yeah, so the, the, one of the one of the best things that um, uh, anyone can do if you're going to buy, spend out uh, millions of dollars on a property. And if you're going to trust people with your money, go to the asset, do the due diligence yourself. You want to know what you're buying. Don't trust that for, to anybody. Be, we're there on site. Now, I'm not an expert, so we hire these experts. Now, I know a lot and I, I'm learning more and more, but I want the HVAC guy that does HVAC for a living. I want the roofer guy who does roofer for a living, the electrician. We scope the pipes, which is a pain in the neck. And all these things I'm telling everybody about, they're expensive. But you don't want to buy a problem and then discover afterwards, oh, my gosh, you know, um, I'll give you an example. So I got a call from one of my buddies. He bought a, He bought an apartment complex. Frantically, I get up early. He called me at 5 a.m. and I knew something was wrong because uh, he's a late sleeper usually. And he's like, oh, you got any money? I, uh, I need a problem. I'm like, I got a huge problem. I'm like, yeah, sure. How much you need? He's 180 grand. I'm like, uh, I got 50. He goes, can you wire it over? So we set it up and everything. And then I'm like. I grew up with the guy, so it's, it's you know, we're tight. And I uh, eventually I told him, I'm like, dude, what happened? What, what, are you okay? He goes, I did not, um, uh, they had to replace a main to his new apartment complex deal. And I'm like, well, you didn't scope the pipes? Scoping the pipes means you hire a, cam uh, a plumber who has a camera system with a snake with a camera on it. And you go from the deepest part of your property all the way to the street. So you can see tree roots, uh, grease blockage, uh, et cetera. There's weird stuff that happens in pipes. And he didn't do that. He's like, oh, it was too much. And I'm like, dude, it's like four or five grand. It cost him 180K. And when that stuff happens, it's always on Christmas Eve, Saturday at midnight. So you're paying the crews extra to come out. And you got to fix that stuff immediately because your tenants and residents need to have water. And um, so... It, it was right down the center of his parking lot. So he had to replace that. And then it was under two curbs and sidewalks. And, you know, so uh, he didn't do that. He neglected to, you know, don't be worried. I, I, one of the things I really learned is don't worry about like nickels and dimes. Things are going to cost. Spend. And don't race to the bottom when you're, when you're at your, uh, when you're selecting of your um, contractors. Look at their work. Call their people. You, you know, we call if they give us five recommendations, we call each one. And then um, we look, we go by and look at some of their places if it's close enough. Because you don't want to race to the bottom. Race to the bottom, they might add on costs later. Something's fishy. If you get five bids at around, like, say, 100K and somebody comes in at 50, don't take that 50. Something's wrong. So, uh, and then double check and triple check. And now we have the, we have great relationships within the community, which we built upon. So, um, you know, once you get somebody good, we just keep working with them over and over again. So, but it's important to know what you're buying so you can see it. So when you're talking to your investors or even yourself, you know, you want to know, okay, wow, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. And sometimes we will walk away from a deal because we'll realize, uh, the owner, um, did not disclose a lot of things. We discovered a lot of things and they're they're not going to come down on the purchase price so we're not going to force and or hope we can make this deal work sometimes you spend a lot of money and you walk away and that's part of the business chris you have a question comment no it's just that i this is all very i'm very familiar with this because i was working for Prior to getting involved with the uh, with True Optic, I was working with a commercial real estate hedge fund. We were essentially a hard money lender. So I used to have to do 
soft underwriting before my underwriter would go and do his deep dive. And these are all things that we had to look at. Like we had to look at, do you want, do you want to be in this business? If, if they foreclose the property, do we want to own a ski resort? Do you want to, you know, those little things like that, we had to look very granular at, at the entire deal for it to make sense. So I'm, I'm familiar with, with this process. It's taking me back a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's not easy. I wish, I oh. wish it, it gets easier, but it's hard. Okay. So Chris, one of the other things you talked about when you were showing the model, you know, there were, there, there are certain factors that that go into whether you're, you know, of course you you lay out a plan of, around when when the refi and to return uh, capital back to investors or when to when how long the hold is going to be. But you talked about certain factors that go into, you know, that whole process and decision making to, to determine whether or not we are going to hold it a little longer or maybe we're going to exit a little sooner because we've achieved our pro forma. Can you talk a little bit more about the process that goes into to that from a, from from your team's perspective? Yeah, so there's a projected point of a um, where where we think we can maximize the asset. Where can we get the most profit out of the asset? And then um, there's other times too. It's like, if you're done your pro forma, like we've had a property that was a home run. Usually we hit doubles and triples. Uh, we bought a property in Lakewood. We doubled our money in, in 12 months, a lot tax-free. So we were getting unsolicited offers. Now, if that was my apartment complex without anybody else's money, I would keep it. But we have to be aware of our investors, right? We're able to double our money tax-free uh, to a lot of them, and um, in 12 months, because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So we did our pro forma, which we thought was going to take us four years, in 12 months. So that we had to sell. So now, when we did our pro forma for this asset, 506 South, we did not know that was announced. the The Great Wolf Lodge and Resort was announced a couple weeks before our closing. So we were going to originally keep it three years, but if things are going great, people can walk to work in Houston where you have to drive all over the place. We might keep it, but we can't forecast what the future is. We can up to a point, but um, that way, uh, if we've hit our pro forma, uh, we either do a cash out refi and, and, then, um, uh, and then we keep the asset or we look to sell. So. Every deal is a little different, and um, you just got to look to see when you can maximize your your profit in a tax friendly manner for your investors and yourself. Because eventually, you're going to run out of the tax savings. So then you either have to decide on um, you know either 1031 exchange or maybe refinancing or maybe putting in some more big capex items whether it be a roof hvac systems windows something like that to extend that tax liability uh tax advantages and then you also want to um uh do a cost segregation segregation study at some point some people take it right away some people will do it after the renovation i've done both um and it, it, it's all deal dependent so yeah, well, I remember one of the other conversation that we we've had was a lot of uh, you know a lot of discussion about you know the the care and you talked about even a little bit about it this evening um, the the care that you take for the residents of your of your properties um, can can you can you maybe go into that a little bit more and 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 help us understand you know how you know the the why behind that right like some some people look at this and and they're just thinking hey you know let's go in and execute our our our, our business plan and, and it doesn't necessarily you know factor in what the residents need or want um it's more about what what it is the sponsors may may think a lot of sponsors that i've heard and, and talked to talk to over the 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 course of time here they come it's more uh i guess self-centered and not so much thoughtful thoughtful enough about the in the actual residents of the property that they're acquiring tell us a little bit more about that process for for, for you guys and how you go about um doing that and why it's so important well we always start with the end in mind so what does that mean so we want to know what our grandmothers what our parents 
but our friends and family want to live in this apartment complex. Then we work backwards because they've been beat down by the former owners who have not treated them well. So first of all, you know, our employees are fantastic. They're awesome people and they're people person, right? Everybody talks about sticks and bricks and spreadsheets and all that. Nobody cares about that. I mean, you got to care about your residents. You're, that's your customer. If you give that customer a lot of love and, and attention and listen, it's the hardest thing to do in anywhere in life is listen. You'll know exactly what they need. And then we pay attention and take care of their needs because they're going to stay longer. They're going to tell their friends. They're going to start taking ownership. They're going to start planting flowers. They're not going to throw garbage all over the place. They're not going to, you know, when things are bad. They're going to tell us. And uh, when they have bad residents that might be next door or whatever, mischievous people doing bad things, we're going to hear about it. And we're going to see it on our security systems because we put in these security systems to give them another sense of security that if you have your kid, he can go play at the playground. He can go jump in the pool. You don't have to worry about some, you know, some some nefarious thing happening, right? You have confidence in knowing this is a good community. And then what happens is, you know, your kid might be playing with my kid. You know, you don't have to worry about those sort of things. We're building the community and that's the hardest thing. And it starts with the residents who are our customers. So we have standard operating procedures to give our customers everything that they need to be a success. So, and it starts with our great, like Patricia Whitehurst, like I said, our, our team members, they're experts at this. And they actually taught us a lot of how to deal with residents, even more so than the other deals that I've been in, because, um, you know, th that's what they've done and do and, and have done for several years. So I know a lot, like, um, but I will never say I know everything because I'm always learning and th there's stuff that changes every day. But it's like uh, the customer, our residents are the most important thing because we don't have those. We can talk about everything else. If we, don't have, if we have an empty apartment complex, who cares, right? We want to fill this up with like-minded people that are going to take care of their properties and not destroy them and create a nice community for a living experience for everybody, right? Because it's 180 units, so that's 180 potential families and or, you know, working class people. So we're putting in millions of dollars into these properties and we want to give them the best living experience that they can have. I think you're muted, Chris. I'm on mute. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I, I just wanted to allow for, for others, if you, um, if you have questions or comments, please do throw them out. I don't want to monopolize all the time. And if not, I, I will. I do have uh, one one other uh, question, uh, Chris, that I wanted to throw out to you while, while others are thinking, yep. and and that is, um, you know, t can you maybe talk about you know the, the these partners, the your your employees, the people that work on your team, whether they are directly on your team or they are are, are third party providers that are supporting the team. Can you talk about the process that you go through and and selecting these these third parties? You you talked a little bit about you talked about reference and those types of things but 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 why talk about what you do and, and then really help us understand why that's so important especially for those people that are you know looking at passively investing and why that why they need to be mindful of of who the operators are working with and how that's going to protect their investment yeah so we have a third party uh uh building manager and on-site manager teams they're called asset living we met J.C. Reeves. We interviewed several different companies, and um, they stood out. Uh, they're fantastic. I think they manage 148,000 complexes around the United States. Um, so we we met with him, just a solid salt of the earth guy, really good. And uh, he assigned us with Patricia Whitehurst, who's our regional vice president, and um, she's awesome. She's been doing it for 20 years, and she specializes in doing the value add strategy. She knows she's buying a just we're buying a distressed asset and the turnarounds that go with that. And now her team, like our on site uh, complex managers, Denise Ochoa and and then Victor Baez, who's the, our head of maintenance. So 
they technically work for Asset Living, but they've been on our teams now. This is our third deal that we've grown together. And we have them, and they're going to be on our next deal too because <clears throat> they, they allow us to think and, and, and create a value for the residents while they're do, handling the day-to-day -day operations. We're making sure the renovations are on a timely fashion. You know, the elements are there for the renovations to happen, the flooring, the, the you know, the sheetrock, all the electrical equipment and stuff like that, making sure the contractors, you know, are, are dotting their I's and crossing their T's. So um, by doing it that way, that allows us to look at the asset, to maximize the savings, to put in smart valves, you know, to save water, uh, LED lights, uh, a little things that add up just a couple grand here or there. But at the end of the year, it's, you know, it's several hundreds of thousands of dollars that go back right into the net operating income. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Well, I want to I want to see if, if others have any any other questions. Otherwise, I'll stop the recording and we can just uh, leave the last few minutes for uh, just open discussion, virtual networking, uh, you know, to, to talk a little bit more. But Chris, I just want to thank you again uh, for for your time. And uh, Nick, do you have a question? I see you came off mute. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask real quick. Um, I was just a, from a high, very high level, nothing detailed, but in the remodeling process, is there like a, are the residents relocated or is it kind of just kind of that piece of it? How does that so, work? The sometimes if they want to stay, we'll move them down the hall. Um, some people stay actually don't want to move. So if they're good residents, we'll keep them. Uh, but usually what happens is we'll say, you know, hey, Nick, uh, we're going to move into a newly renovated apartment. Um, it's going to be down the hall. Um, and then some people want to leave. So then we renovate and then we'll get new residents in there. So it's a little bit, that's a little bit of a juggle. That's why you kind of have a, have a good team that's actually done this before because that's, uh, you, you got to, you know, it's privacy and everything else that you got to be aware of and you want to keep your residents that are good residents happy. So, and then if you can move them to a new unit down the hall and you know, you're not having to go out and spend all the marketing money to lease that up, that's a, that's a win-win for everybody. Got it, got it, thanks. Good question. All right, one, one more time. And anyone else have any questions? And otherwise we will stop the recording. And uh, and I will just say this before I do stop the recording, Chris. Thank you very much for your your time this evening. This was an awesome presentation. Um, the I, I, there's a comment in the chat about the model. The, the, the you know folks were really intrigued by that, and um, just really want to thank you for sharing your insights and expertise to, tonight. Um, really 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 appreciate you. So thank you very much. And so I'm going to stop the recording now, guys. Thank you.